Well, whether it's hot, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, Frankie's got the weather we got. Wait a minute. Well, whether it's cold, whether it's hot, Frankie's got the weather, whether or not. There it is. Hey, guys. Just getting back in the door. Welcome to the Comediological Report. <laughs> As heard on C for 88.7 FM in Prince George and CKUW Winnipeg 95.9 FM. How you doing, Joe Stover? How you doing, Brandon Hoke? You guys here for Frankie? He's on his way. He just needed the yep. he just needed the link is all. And uh, Joey, I just got my uh, latest issue of Stylus Magazine uh, published by uh, CKUW. And one of my always favorite things to do is to look at the program schedule. And oh. sure enough, where are we here? There it is. Monday morning to the Comedological Report right nice. there in print. So that must mean it's official. That's official. Yeah. Hi, Frankie. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great so far, Joey. How was your day? I'm having a great it was... day. It's been warm and humid earlier today. Then the cooler air is taking over Sydney, Nova Scotia tomorrow. I had a great day. I uh, I uh, hiked my five pack of boys uh, eighteen kilometers. At a boy. Yeah. Well, oh it was it was so windy in the bush today that I mean it was excessively windy. Like you just don't see in the summertime, right? Like, and it was we got there it was like six degrees this morning, so fire behavior is pretty low. But it, you know, excessively windy all day. So we all we could hear in the forest is trees coming down in the burn zones, right? So the areas we want to go in action and work, you know, we just couldn't. So uh, what we did was uh, we're trying to get to another, we're trying to link our division to another division on the fire line and there's no roads or anything. And so we're just basically scouting to find how do we tie this line up, right? So uh, we're on a fire called uh, Cutoff Creek Fire. It's south of Vanderhoof and it's uh, 21,500 hectares, but because of the weather conditions, it's been sitting down real nicely. So uh, we're getting a good good edge on it how's everyone doing uh what's your week been like frankie it's been i had a great week it, did, it was humid earlier in city nova scotia this week then it got to cooler air hitting for friday freight here in city nova scotia and and there's a lots of thunderstorms and heavy rain this, this afternoon past in city nova scotia it had lo a lot of rain in my area which is city nova scotia tomorrow's egypt's national holiday revolution day nice that's the independence day, day. Friday, July 23rd, every year. And I was on the Base Guys show earlier today at 2.20 p.m. Atlantic time. And Base Guys getting lots of views first time in a long time on YouTube. That's why Base Guy made me share the video. And I wrote the comment and things like that. Now Base Guy's sharing a lot. Now now people getting lots of views because I shared the video. And Base Guy's doing great so far. And did you hear about that? It's been a lot of stormy weather in Africa, like a around the southern Chad and Niger and Mali and Timbuktu. They're getting a lot of rain right now in the southern Sahara Desert. They're getting so much monsoon rains in India. There's a extreme typhoon. It's going to bypass Taiwan. It's going to head towards China. There's a lot of rain in the Pacific. India has been a lot of rain and thunderstorms and because of monsoon season going on right now down in Australia. It's wintertime there right now. It's been a lot of so much rain in New Zealand, snow in Queenstown. As well, what's happening over in the west coast of North America with forest fires, Frankie? It's really, really, really bad. Burning a lot of fires, including Siberia. Road bones, coal on the highway, going from Yaktus to Magadan. So much fires going on with dry thunderstorms, trigger more fires. Car had to turn around because the fires blocked the highway in Yaktusk. In Yaktusk and in, in Siberia, right? Yeah. Um, I heard that in Canada, the uh, temperature all-time high was broken. It reached 49.5 degrees Celsius. And in Death Valley, what was it, Frankie, in Death Valley? Over 50. 54.4 degrees Celsius, 130 Fahrenheit. People can't live in that weather, can they? Climate change happening in the world. And the doing great. And Monica's doing great. And she's doing great so far. How was your day? And Vancouver, British Columbia is cooler in the coast. It was so hot earlier this month. It's been a lot of rain all across the eastern United States, especially southeast. It's been really hot and dry in the southwest and over in Japan. And China's getting a typhoon. Oh, that's news. Yeah, the... Uh... It's reports they had some snow in Queenstown, New Zealand, lately because it's their winter time. They'll be heading into the 
midwinter in New Zealand already. Two weeks from Saturday, solar summer ends on August 7, 2021. Boy, I wish we were heading into midwinter next week. <laughs> Um, uh, I need a few. I need a few more months of work here. So. Oh yeah, I, I'm okay. I'm okay with it being summer as long as as long as you're pounding the pavement there, Joey. That's the only redeeming quality of summer is that you're working. Well, the, and then you know the funny thing is, uh, it doesn't rain for like ever in British Columbia. And then like our first day on the line, it just pounds rain. We've had thunderstorms every day over here somewhere. Right. Uh, woke up yesterday and 32 millimeters fell overnight two nights ago. At the fire line on the rain gauge, right, and it's like thirty-two mils. You know, it's like, and so our first, our first fire we were at was. Um, I found Camp a video o from base. I found a video from base guy show. First fire we were at was Camso Lake fire, and uh, just got rained on, rained on. We were sleeping in tents, right? So it was awesome, just trudging through crappy mud all day, right? And uh, at least here we're in a a pipeline camp. And I just had steak, and that's why I was right to the very last minute getting to steak night. It was awesome. How about you, Brandon? How haven't uh, heard much from you yet? Uh, yeah, my alarms are going off like crazy here every two seconds. So we have a uh, pretty active day in uh, Saskatchewan, and uh, it's been pretty active here in Alberta, especially central region the last couple of days. And south, it's been actually really quiet. We've had... Not a lot of rain. Uh, we don't expect any more rain for the next, uh, at least next week here. And we'll see with the smoke that's moved in, we've uh, kept our temperatures down, which is good. So we did not get to the 40 degrees we were looking at last week because of the smoke. So I guess we can thank the smoke for that. But it was uh, it was nasty for one day. Then it went over to kind of the fog and mist. And that was kind of neat for a day or so as I hiked up a hill over here for a day. So I was able to go hiking for a day. So that was nice. And then, um, cool. yeah, so there's that. And then as we go into the week here, the heat returns. So we're back in the 30s again for the next few days. Looks like we might get another round of smoke. But uh, we have had some pretty strong thunderstorms erupt in Saskatchewan today. Like, holy smokes, we had uh, North Battleford get pounded uh, earlier this evening with uh, over 100K wind gusts. And Saskatoon had over 90k gusts as well. Looks like we may have had some damage there. And then now we have some rotating supercells that have erupted in southern Saskatchewan. One cell near Weber, another one up by Indian Head up here, and then another one near Ituna. They're showing signs of rotation right now. So going to be uh, watching those storms very closely over the next few hours that have a potential to possibly produce maybe an isolated tornado this evening as this line of severe storms moves east into Manitoba eventually and this extends all the way up into the northern part of Manitoba as well so looks like the whole province is going to get lit up tonight that's what well, they're saying anyway feel free to go in at depth because uh you mean usually I'm the guy who knows lots about weather in British Columbia but uh honestly uh I only know what's going on at fire G41269. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, the other night, uh, yesterday I was warning the guys uh, during the, the tailgate meeting up at uh, our division section. Um, I think some of the thunderstorms that are coming today, you know, could be quite serious. Like watch out, you, even in, the, in this part of the caribou, you don't know uh, tornado activity is possible. And sure enough, these storms developed on top of us and we pulled out of the trees and, and uh, not much came of it. They went, uh, eastward and then uh apparently drop quarter size hail on quinell areas and stuff like that right so i mean aggressive thunderstorms and i mean we're wearing helmets but i, I don't want to get hit by quarter size hail so that was i was glad it missed me but other than that i mean uh, our relentlessly crappy weather here i have no idea what's going on in british columbia or anywhere i know there's evacuations of, if you guys know something here's a good time to talk because i really like i say only know what's going on in fire uh, g41269 <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, here in Alberta, we actually have a uh, grass fire uh, outside of Brooks near Patricia this evening, and uh, they're battling. We, ha we had wind gusts of 60K today as well. So uh, I haven't I've heard unconfirmed reports they evacuated Dinosaur Provincial Park, but I'm trying to find more information on that right now. So that's unconfirmed for now. But uh, they're asking people to stay away from 544, Highway 544, and a couple of range roads there. Because the grass fire spread pretty quickly, and especially at those winds on the open prairie. Whoa! So that was uh, that's today as well. Uh, now into uh, I do believe as we go into BC here, I'm just trying to get the uh, BC graphic here since it's not loading for me. 
I'll try it again here. But uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to be in for a couple of dry days. Maybe another chance the storms tomorrow, looks like, especially northern interior. Up in the Yukon, they have a risk of severe weather, which is pretty phenomenal for them, I guess. So that's that. Uh, let's go Prince. I'm just going to look at the Prince George. Sorry, oh, yeah, it looks like we that, might uh, get a few more. Yeah, it looks I like we might get a few more storms this weekend. I know that fire fire behavior down south has been quite aggressive because of the heat. And I know that... Uh, yeah that uh you know the bui index is is really high down there but uh as soon as you sort of get to the north the, the halfway point of british columbia it tails off quickly and we've been really benefiting from that rain here so uh you know uh i hear all the ministry guys talk and and uh the the wind and heat uh were very concerning for everybody but again uh most of us even even the ministry guys don't really know what's going on out there because all we know here is a uh, fire g41269 yeah, yeah I, think, take I think the trend is going to continue with the heat in the south and kind of unsettled and a little cooler in the central northern regions right throughout next week there so yeah. well, that's that's we're we're so lucky here because uh i mean a lot of my crewmen are crew is like uh you know hopefully we can stomp this out we can move on to some real fires and like boys like no, like what you have to understand is like, a we're being put up in a, a camp with with meals and beds and our own. I got my own bathroom. Like this is the most <laughs> posh fire situation I've ever been in. The behavior is low, so no one's too stressed about anything. Everyone's in a good mood on the line. It's like, no, take this one while you can, because uh, eventually we're gonna be going south where there's five thousand guys and two beds. Yeah. We'll be sleeping outside in camps with 600 people in them and stuff like that. And that's that's the stuff I don't like to do. I like the initial attack jobs where uh, there's like 10 of us and then we're gone. 600 people on a fire. Ugh, it's a lot of chaos. How about Lots you, Josh? You have to unmute your mic there, bro. Oops, rookie mistake. Uh, yeah, we've got our share of, uh, of some fires, of course, too, here in okay. northern Manitoba and uh, south – or, sorry, northern Saskatchewan as well. Like, basically, right, the entire prairies is on fire, it seems. Um, so we, we had a bit of a reprieve earlier this week from the smoke. It was only about two days after the wind shifted, but the wind has uh, gone back to coming from the south – west which of course means that all these fires in bc alberta saskatchewan manitoba and we even have some local fires uh burning about um maybe 75 kilometers south of us so we're getting some pretty good smoke from there and we've actually had some evacuations up north here um to Dooley lake and york landing first nations uh some of them have flown down to Thompson. I know that we actually have some some evacuees from York Landing that arrived on the train, popped up on the train. And uh, so they're hoping that they'll be able to return home soon. It's tough to say kind of what the, uh, what, with the smoke forecast, the way it looks. It looks like it's going to be hanging around a while and hopefully they can get to the fires. But as far as the weather goes, in, at least in Churchill, Manitoba, we have... Uh, it's getting to 25 degrees tomorrow. However, that's the warmest it's going to get for the next week. And we're also, Brandon was talking earlier about the, the big line of thunderstorms that is uh, getting into uh, Western Manitoba right now, which is Thursday night when we're recording this. Um, we're supposed to start seeing some of that overnight around three in the morning is when they're calling for it. And this is, this is a beautiful thing here. Um, cloudy with 60% chance of showers, risk of a thunderstorm in the morning and early in the afternoon, wind south 40 gusting to 60, becoming southwest 60 gusting to 80 in the afternoon. And I know that's not super great news for the smoke and probably not real good for those folks that are fighting fires down there because wind is, I think wind is kind of the enemy, is it not, Joey? Well, basically, yeah. Or can it be a friend at some times? I'm not sure how that works. Well, not really. I mean, uh, yeah, the 30-30-30 rule is uh, 30 degrees, uh, less than 30% humidity, winds over 30 kilometers an hour, explosive fire conditions. So those three uh, things together, that's, that, that's, that's what's good. going on in southern BC. It's called crossover weather, right? So if anyone has mm. a, a, any kind of an idea of what the evacuations are out there, I'd love to hear as much as, as you got. Like I, I say, I've had such little – like I come in exhausted, completely filthy and dirty, and uh, – 
try to shower, try to eat, and then catch up, and then try to sleep. So I, I just haven't really – I don't find myself able to actually plug into things the way I normally do, right? Even though we're at a camp situation here, which is nice yeah, to well, you, you kind of You kind of have uh, a more important job in front of you at this point. So I suppose so. That's not – that's not, uh, you, I think you can be forgiven for not knowing what's going on in the rest of the province when you have, you know, when you're literally fighting fires. So I think, I think you get a pass. I, I don't know about Brandon and Frankie, but I mean, I'll give you a pass. I don't know about these guys. Well, on top I'll of that, give I'm you a pass crew, too. <laughs> on top of that, I'm a crew leader, right? So I got paperwork to do every day. I got uh, four different guys underneath me, plus another five pack that's under my responsibility as well. They have a crew leader as well, but I'm the, and, and on I this get, part of the I'm, on this part, I'm the boss of all 10 of the pack, right? So I got to do all the paperwork. I got to uh, make sure, you know, well, everyone's getting along. We have a great crew. I mean, but there's always things that people need and da 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 right? So it's just, you got to do all that balancing work. And, and then you got to check in with Fire Center and do your radio stuff. And then you got to drive and you got to get there. You got to get your information. And it's just, you know, go, 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 go all day, right? So by the time I get here at night, I'm like, ooh. I believe that. How about you, Frankie? What were you about to say? I'm doing great, Tilver, and I get a, I sent you a link. I get a video from Base Guy talking about the fires. They'll they'll show a clip of that part of your show. Okay, you send that to my Facebook. Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, send me any videos you got, guys, because uh, fill in time may be real nice to have tonight. I, I don't want to have to do a whole lot of editing. Basically, I want to just basically uh, have an hour and go with it. Well, well, Joey, I'll tell you. Anytime you need, like, I have a, I have a, uh, an inspirational song to play whenever uh, it fits in the show. It's, uh, it's one that we all know, and one that uh, people that don't like the heat as much as I do, I think it, it's a, it's a rallying tune that we can all get behind. But, uh, but yeah, whenever, whenever you want to edit that in, or if you want some filler, I'll be glad to, glad to play a tune for you whenever. Awesome. Are you gonna sing it for us? I'll sing it. I got the, I got my dad's Martin. Oh. So I can... Okay, it's on. It's on. I, I'm really stoked because, uh, well, I'm not stoked about it, but uh, there's a fire in Anarchist Mountain, which means uh, my song's gonna start getting start getting radio play again. My, you guys might not know this. My most famous song I ever wrote was called Fire in Anarchist Mountain, and uh, every time there's a fire in Anarchist Mountain, my SoCan royalties go up. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. If, as long as it's a manageable fire, I hope it. I hope it burns yourself a nice bunch of Christmas presents for the youngsters and burns. I don't think uh, it's manageable down no use. <laughs> it sounds like it's there's evacuations and carnage and scary oh, situations well, and then that's not good. Then that's not good. Sitting here in a fire that's uh, you know seeing some stuff creeping around the ground and because it's so hum the humidity's been so high and everything's so wet but uh, even with those winds today that came whipping in it was just like that and things started drying out you know sixty kilometer an hour winds all day suddenly it's like roads that were swamp for days are suddenly hardening up just like that right so I can't even imagine yeah somebody that's never been to British Columbia I've been all over this country but my glaring omissions are the Yukon, Prince Edward Island, and British Columbia. I've never set foot in any of those places yet, and shame on me. I'm 39 now. I should be... Uh, I've been close. I've been to Waterton National Park. I've been very, very close to the border, but... Close to the border, but it's definitely a different country. Definitely a different country. Let's... Yeah. Trying to find some details on what's going on in the world of British Columbia with fires. <laughs> Looking at my interior weather in the wilderness watchers for the first time, Punsy Mountain, four degrees this morning. Punsy Mountain, Martina J. Williams says, uh, Kimberly was reporting 21 degrees. They were shivering. Uh, that's not so bad, I guess. And I uh, posted some uh, videos of the our crew on uh, YouTube and whatnot. And I see that... Uh, they're at the top of the, both videos at the top of the list on uh, interior weather and wilderness watchers. So that means they're getting watched a lot. Brandon Houck shared a post wildfire near Hope, BC on July 19th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was, uh, I think that was near Coquihalla highway. Yeah. Someone on my page was driving by and saw the fire on the Coquihalla. So they said it was near Hope, but as I looked it up, it was right by the Coquihalla highway. 
And yeah. And I, think, uh, I think that fire's still going. Let's see here. Oh, well, I'm sure it yeah, is. Yeah, it's still going, that one. That one's right beside the Coquihalla. I'm looking at this image now. Inconeep Creek wildfire between Oliver and Osoyoos. Greg Reilly, photographer, shared this post. It quickly grew from three hectares to 300 over the course of a few hours. At 9 p.m., it was 700 hectares. This was July 20th. This was put up. Crews were remained on site overnight. I took these photos at 11 o'clock, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and the, the problem with the fires down south right now, too, is they're so explosive in their, in their behavior yeah. that you really can't do much about it. I mean, you can put a, a guard line seven miles away from the actual head of the fire and then mm -hmm. hope it doesn't jump over the guard, right? But, I mean, you can't put crews yeah. in front of these kinds of fires. Sycamus yeah. now on a back alert. Oh, yeah, Sycamus. Yeah, there are lots of uh, vacationers out there. One of the guys in my crew... Have leave. Uh, one of the guys in my crew um, had his house burn up in... Uh, in uh Lytton. Lytton so uh we good time this summer we're out to get revenge last uh 22 hours ago so uh 21st of july isle pierre west of prince george large hail ground just covered in it yep elizier <laughs> was on the highway going from jasper to everton he saw the hail storm in person oh, oh yeah, yeah yesterday's storm how was what was about that storm all about he was oh playing. yeah we I think uh, Leslieville had golf ball sized hail out of that one yesterday. Olivier returns to Kuku, took none of it on Saturday, and he goes back to work on Monday. Awesome. Be nice to have him back. Get him on the show. It's been a while. 5 30 uh, Prince George. information on Dinosaur Park. Okay, good. Here. So there's, there's a big grass fire outside of the park there. So it looks like they've uh, closed the preserve. So that's the kind of like the touring area, more of a touring area of the park. So it's an evacuation for uh, precaution and it's locked down the preserve, but the campground and the rest of the area is still open and everyone's still able to camp there. So it looks like the winds have died down a bit. So that will help with that situation out there. Hag Dixon posted uh, yesterday a map, the daily forecasted maximum surface level smoke, uh, and it looks like uh, what you're saying, Joe, is uh, absolutely true. The worst place in Canada appears to be uh, sort of uh, close to where you are. Yeah. Looks worse there than British Columbia. What's that? Do you get tornado warnings? Yeah, that's a severe thunderstorm warning in Saskatchewan. 44 of them are out right now. Oh, my goodness. That's <laughs> are you serious? I should get checked in that, too. This is cool. You're listening to the Comedological Report on 88.7 FM in Seifer and Prince George and 95.9 .9 FM in, C in Winnipeg, CKUW. Look at that, yes. So we have tonight on the 22nd of July, Manitoba, severe thunderstorm warnings for Broshit, Flin Flon, Lynn Lake right now, Tadouli Lake, Thompson, uh, watches for... Uh, Dauphin, Russell, Roblin, uh, Winnipegosis, Swan River, Duck Mountain, Porcupine Provincial Forest, the Paw, Wanless, Westray, Clearwater Provincial Park. Holy Saskatchewan just pretty, lit yeah, up. Pretty That's much, pretty much, uh, pretty much all of all of Western Manitoba, Ooh. right from the United States border up to the up to the Nunavut border. Yeah, it's just yeah. Uh, heat and then the um, and the severe storms and. We're we're gonna miss a good chunk of that in Churchill just because of the uh, like losing the um, the daytime heating and things yeah. like that. I think it would have been something, uh, but we haven't really had much in the way of thunder or even really rain yet. So there's a few people that are looking forward to to this uh, hopefully storm coming. And it's a okay. It looks in, like it's five hundred kilometers west of you right now. The line. Yeah, that's how it's kind of looking. I've got the uh, I've got the lightning tracker on here now, and the the closest lightning strikes right now to us, according to this, are in Tadouli Lake, which is about two hundred and fifty kilometers west of us. So hopefully it hopefully it comes soon. And I know that we're at least in church. And now this is goofy. I don't know if anybody's ever heard this before, but I found um, no. I found it over for Chris Chittick. He's busy chasing storms, really busy. Yeah, have you been talking to him? I just sent him a tweet today. He's really busy over chasing storms. 
Yeah, I bet he is right now. Yeah, busy, busy, busy guys. So, I mean, storm chases are pretty busy at this point, I'd think. But I yeah, yeah, yeah there's the yeah, there's um, nasty one. Going oh, go ahead, go. go ahead there, Brandon. Yeah, there's nasty storm going down the Trans Canada, heading right into Grainfell. There, that's going to be damaging winds in the next, uh, say, fifteen to twenty minutes. Yeah, that whole yeah. line, like in a, you know, just to the. Well, I mean, Regina is kind of on it, but I mean, just to the east of it, uh, and then north, it's just solid. Oh, and the Capel, know, Val there. Capel Valley is getting hammered right now as we speak, like absolutely throttled with lightning and rain. And even looking, at, you know, north uh, up to your direction, Joe. I mean, that's that's thick concentrations of lightning all mm -hmm. through there. You know, usually up into those areas, you don't see it quite, you know, that thick, right? Right, and that's where we start, you know, even though I'm okay with there being storms and stuff, like that's all thick, thick, thick bush, right? And uh, a, a good chance, obviously, for more fires to spark up there. So so we'll see what happens. But what I was go yeah, well, that's exactly it. So, uh, but but what I was saying, yeah, so in, the, in our town here, we've got these huge, for about four weeks out of the summer, these huge, giant, horse flies right we call them bulldogs up here i'm sure everyone is aware of those little bastards when they get on you they they don't sting you as much as right they rip like a big chunk oh, yeah. out of your so anyway the uh the old wives tale and i don't know if there's any truth to it but whenever there's a thunderstorm or any, any sort of lightning these things disappear like that's kind of the it's it's I don't know if it's ever been proven, but there all the all the elders around town are saying all we need is a good thunderstorm and these and these bulldogs, these uh, horse flies will be gone. Now I don't know if anybody could speak to that, but it is. I've never uh, been done. Yeah, I don't. Like, I don't know, but apparently that's how it is. I've been here for over thirty years, and a few lightning bolts in the area, and they're gone for at least a few days before they come back. And usually kind of around uh, maybe the end of July, if, if there's a big storm, they're gone for the year. It's so bizarre. I don't know. So anyway, I know people in Churchill are very, very, very much wanting some lightning and some, uh, some thunder and stuff like that. And they'll probably get their wish a little later, uh, later on this evening. Well, here's a clue. I'm not sure exactly where Svartaveg Nunavut is. Uh, it's currently right now, uh, min it's almost minus one. It's 0.7 degrees below zero there right now. And the hot spot in Canada is Winnipeg, 28.4 at this hour, 8.30 at o'clock at night, uh, oh. Pacific time. So 10.30 oh. at night. 10.30 at night, stop. 28 degrees. So, I mean, you got that insane cold and insane heat going on, right? Hot spot in British Columbia, 26.6 degrees. Cold spot, 10.2 in Yoho National Park. Yo so, good spread there. Canada big. Canada big. <laughs> really? I think uh, Icefields Parkway, way, that's way up in elevation there. They, I think they had snowflakes today. I would believe snowflakes. that. It felt so like it was snow near freezing. Here. Here. I've been there before. And I went there in shorts. It was a bad idea. It was yeah, don't do that. Almost <laughs> mid to high twenties in Banff, and then get there in shorts, and oh, I was freezing. It was like seven degrees. Elevation <laughs> makes fools of us all. Well, even yeah. living at four thousand feet in Wells, like I'm always telling people when they come up in the summer, like, well, make sure you bring very warm clothing. And of course, they're coming from Vancouver or Kamloops, and they just don't understand that what you're, you're. I'm telling them like. Bring winter clothes. Then I was at this one festival. It was like the end of September or end of October, uh, August. And uh, everyone was, it's like three in the morning and everyone's huddled around trying to stay warm and, and socializing, you know, and, uh, and the guy's like, oh, I'm so cold. And I said, oh, well, you're not dressed for the weather. And then they thought he'd be smart on me. He's like, I thought you were some kind of a mountain man. Look at you wearing a parka in the summer. And I said, yeah, well, how come uh, you're cold and I'm not? Because I'm a mountain man. <laughs> I know better. Mount mountain folks know. Mountain folks know, northern folks know, and it's uh, it's <laughs> it's pretty yeah. funny how some of those uh, how some of those folks. Are. I've I've even heard my parents are from uh, southwestern Ontario. My mother's from Windsor. She's heard and seen people come across from Michigan, like people from Ann Arbor, 
in the summertime come across with like skis and things yeah. like that. And it's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> Canada is actually Canada is actually south of you. You're, if you live in Detroit, Canada is south of you. So well, a little bit of it is li- little odd. Li- well, I mean that part of Canada anyway. Yeah, if you're in Detroit and you yeah. want to go to Canada, you got to go south. But it's the ultimate of ignorance, right? Because it's not just you know. And this is you're not making stuff up too. Like everyone's heard these stories, right? And it's the ultimate of ignorance because it's not just I'm ignorant about a country across you know the water there. It's to think that you could drive two hours and things would be that different. You know, you have to be insane to really. Be or live in Cal- or live in California. I think you can drive what a couple hours and be in the mountains or something. Who knows? Yeah. I've never been to California either. I've never been anywhere. What the hell do I know? Who the hell am I? I know nothing. I am nothing. But even then, if it's thirty <laughs> degrees, uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of the ultimate of ultimate. Yeah, it's it's definitely not California and Michigan. <laughs> no, no. But We've I mean, all heard like, this though. It's it's all. I mean, it might as well be that as hot as it gets uh, there, kind of with the Gulf Stream coming up. You know, I've been I've been in Windsor in July and, and you know, Humidex is something like 48 or 49. And I'm looking up and I literally jealous of cirrus clouds. I'm looking at cirrus clouds and I'm like, just so jealous because it's frozen up there. And I wish I was <laughs> <laughs> kind of pathetic, but it's just who I am, man. You talked a lot to them. You know, the Egypt is way ahead of time than us. That means they're in the holiday right now in Egypt because they're way ahead of us. Now, you talked to lots of Americans, Frankie, and you uh, they love you. Have you been really educating Americans on Canadian weather, you think? Like Trey Campbell's one. He lives in the States and he was in Texas. Pete Glanka lives in Carolina, lives in Virginia. And there's another guy named... And there's a lot of Reed Turner lives in the States too. And Jim Cantor from the Weather Channel. No, but of course Reed Timmer and, and Jim Cantori would know about, you know, weather in Canada or whatever, right? But uh do you think like when you first started talking to Trey that he really had a clue what it was like up here? Like a Jim Cantor. So you're doing your part to, to educate all the Americans, Frankie. And uh, and Jane and a lot a lot of them. And did you hear about that? Some of the th- in Mexico, they don't even speak English. Yeah, um, a lot of them don't. I hear we got Mexican firefighters coming to BC. So, okay, let's look, I'm looking at BC Wildfire Truth Out Group. Evacuation order. Uh, one person saying they got 107 head of cattle from Anarchist Mountain. 64 heifers, 44 calves, two bulls. Does anyone have anything? Need to move ASAP. Good luck with that. That's uh, There's people, looks like they're trying to help. But that's a lot of animals to move, most definitely. It's just a different world. Like, I can't even comprehend what that must be like for folks that have to deal with with fires year in, year out. And <laughs> I, I could barely get myself out of, out of a place, never mind, you know, a bunch of head of cattle. Uh, they were conducting emergency evacuation drills with CH-146 Grif- Griffin rescue helicopters in Kamloops as part of assistance to communities, so evacuation practice going on those griffin choppers are so sweet looking um want to hear something pretty sweet i'm probably gonna get a chopper ride the next day or two or three so i'm looking nice. forward to that because uh we got basically we got 14 kilometers of undefended line that we're still trying to figure out and uh yeah you know the best we can really do is uh we got a guy going in deep to make some helipads and then uh, we can kind of bump our crews in i'm seeing a a pretty sad story and uh, let's see. Craig Cable's about to join on right now. So, uh, oh, good. So I'm seeing this one. Uh, our brother Dylan Bullock is a wildland firefighter. It's been BC Wildfire Service since 2013. During a controlled burn in the Sparks Lake Fire on July 7th, there was an accident, and Dylan suffered major burns to face, chest, arms, and back. He was airlifted to Hope during a windstorm that prevented uh, the helicopter from flying to Vancouver. The following day, he was flown to Vancouver, where he was immediately admitted to ICU on July 8th. He was placed in an induced coma for three days for his body to rest and recuperate. Um, oh, that's, yeah, in the pictures, he, it looks like he's really had a, he's in good spirits and has no doubt his physical recovery will be quick and he'll be on his feet in no time. We wanted to share this post to make sure people aware were aware of what happens to first responders in the blink of an eye, but also bring more awareness to what happens with, within the nervous system while the body was on fire. 
uh, PTSD, not all wounds are visible. Blaine got to talking about the ride to recovery on August 19th, and Dylan responded with a smile and said, if I can look over my shoulder, I'll be cracking the throttle with you guys. So that's, uh, that's a sad story. There's, there's, special, oh, you know, love. there's special lot, man. Like that's the for sure. He does Facebook ratings. But that means that he does the Facebook ratings. I remember, and back in the back then, Mike, Michael Mahone did the Facebook ratings on the Carson show, but the Carson gave up the show. Yeah, you were saying. Yeah, I always get skunked on his ratings. I don't think he likes me very much. <laughs> zero, Joe Stover, zero points every week. <laughs> Oh my! Twenty hours ago, I get DOFD, points from him. DOFD assisted BC Forestry in backburn operations. Oh yeah, I was going to say too. Um, um, it's not common for BC firefighters to get those kinds of injuries. So I mean, that's uh, it's sad and upsetting to see. We don't uh, tend to uh, fight fire the way that say uh, some of the American hot shots tend to. We're not so much into. Uh, here comes Trey Campbell. Not so much into direct attack if it's not safe, right? Uh, one of right. our uh, rules is if in doubt, back out. You don't uh, mess around with fire like that. So now uh, a backburning operation, I mean, things kind of go awry when they go awry, right? But for the most part, we don't tend to go to those high danger places when fighting. And I just hey, sent Jason Campbell. a bike from all the way from Australia. What's going on down in Houston, Texas, Trey Campbell? Um. It's just been constant rain all the time. It's like, Still? but yeah, luckily the rain's cleared up. Um, today was a really nice day weather wise. It was sunny, um, only a few clouds, uh, and it was about 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but you know, and other than that, like last week was horrible. It just seemed like it wouldn't stop raining. There were like two of every animal trying to find a boat or something. It was crazy. <laughs> it just rained 24-7. But uh, on the bright side, it looks like things are clearing up and they'll go back to the summer months and it'll be 104 and humid again and the seat belt will burn your legs again. And uh, Yeah, nobody, nobody likes that, so... But uh, today was a good weather day. I got to mow the yard for the first time in like a month. It felt Is that like, thing you're so. playing with, Trey? Can I just ask you to stop playing with it? It's just hell on the audio. Thank you. Just put it. Yeah. Just... That, yeah. No, yeah. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 sorry. It's, a, it's, a, it's okay. It's a nervous habit. So. I got you, buddy. How are you doing all like all together, though? Your show is going good. Uh, things at uh, ESPN Radio going good. Uh, your life okay? Yeah, everything's going pretty well at 97.5. Um, I've just been doing a lot of um, games and everything, and uh, they have they've had all the the fine the NBA finals have been on our station, so I've been running those. And um, but it's been going well. Just uh, just been doing a lot of cleaning for the most part. So um, <laughs> so you know how. That, how was the firefighting? There, there were a lot of fires. I'm I'm having a, just a great time. I mean, really, totally yeah, that, that's good to hear. Um, that's good that that you're go you're you're doing your thing. Uh, um, I'm glad to. Well, I certainly hate that there's fires. I don't want anybody's house to burn down. But you know, it's good that uh, it's good that you're having a good time fighting fires and everything i'd love there to i'd love fire seasons to be always busy but not insane and so we've yeah. well crossed the threshold of insane um some of the things that happens when a fire season isn't busy like so the last two seasons have been dead and plus last year we had the, all the covid and whatnot right so um uh when trying to hire people this year like every every uh, crew has to have a certain number of people with experience on it you can't just have a whole bunch of rookies on a crew right so when trying to find extra guys uh, with experience, we, I had people two years with the people who've uh, taken all their courses and have tickets out the yin yang like I didn't have when I started. The, I'm a danger tree assessor and I got my uh, power saw operator and uh, I'm an OFA three and I'm this and I'm that and I'm a, you know I'm like have you do you have one season on the fire line? Well, no. And so what's happened is 
two years in a row, we haven't had a turnover in rookies. And so that actually affects uh, training, ability, skills across the board and just uh, a pool of talent, right? And then also what happens over that those two years is uh, some really great firefighters went and got real jobs because, yeah, you know, there wasn't the so action, dead. right? Yeah. We're not making that big money fighting fires. So, And then so you have a loss of talent from that too, right? I know quite a few people who just, they got great jobs offered to them and they couldn't say no. So uh, you want seasons to be busy enough that, uh, you know, a certain amount of fire is good for the forest. Uh, a certain amount of fire will, especially with those years that weren't so hot and dry, if there'd been more fire activity in those years, there'd be less explosive activity now because some of that fuel would have burnt up. It would have burnt up at a time when it couldn't have burned the way it's burning now, right? But up where uh, I'm stationed right now, uh, we just had like five days or six days of rain almost off and on. And uh, so the fire we're on, it's, it's 21,000 hectares, but it's it's everything sitting down. So we've had to do a lot of seek and destroy. And what's made it especially hard right. during the a couple days ago when it was especially rainy is uh, everything's sitting down so much that it's that much harder to find. Like we're literally sniffing around and then opening up the ground and then finding smoke flying out of these places. Right. But, uh, finding them is hard. We're like literally yeah, with their nose and feel with the back of our hands for heat on the ground in some spots. So at least today with the wind and uh, a little bit warmer conditions and drier, we started seeing smoke in places that, tips us off as to where to go look yeah you know and sure. give it three or four dry warm days and uh you know those fires will come up out of the ground and go for a run right so now is when we want to stomp it it's just you get too much rain it makes it actually harder to do it yeah so when you guys are stomping like do you all use like shovels to open the ground up or like it's just like normal stuff or yeah we got uh shovels pulaski's and uh um we carry a what's called a piss can on our back it's like it's kind of like a ghostbusters kind of thing that uh sprays oh, a little yeah, bit that's, of water. Pretty, that's pretty funny uh, i was smart early on because i knew we were going sort of deep in the bush and a lot of these spots on our where we are on our line that uh, i asked for a shindawa pump and a shinny's uh just a real small little thing i'm still filthy i keep my arms down right. so you can't, i washed my face before i got on that's <laughs> and, good uh, um, so we got this little shinny pump we're hanging around and carrying around and um, a bunch of, you know, a corner line hose. And if uh, we find we're too far out from a control area, and we find major heat then uh, we call in the Huey and uh, drop some buckets on it. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, uh, it was it all because of the heat wave from all of this? Like, the, did the heat wave contribute? It's pretty much the guilty co uh, culprit. Yeah. That makes sense because it was like 115 up there at one point, right? Uh, well, hotter than that. It got up to yeah. uh, 49.6 or something like that in Lytton. I don't know what that is in uh, Fahrenheit. I think it's 126 or something. Like, Jeez. Something crazy, right? Maybe 129. Yeah. I don't know. It there was were a lot of, yeah, there were a lot of people that were like losing their, their, their refrigerator and, and like, I, our friend Brian, who lives up in Oregon, like he had to unplug his refrigerator and it just like it was too late. It had already ruined all their food. And God, I don't even want to think about all the people that, that lost their lives to this heat because it was bad. Well, uh, my number two of my crew, Fred, uh, he lives in he lives in the reserve in Lytton. Uh, the company I work with is pretty much it's mostly uh, natives, eh? First Nations. Right. And uh you know, the heat uh, settled in there and um, picked Lytton and then burned it off the face of the earth. Boy. The only way it was I can a pretty, aw pretty awful couple days for them. Climate change, yeah. like, picked Lytton, you know? Yeah, and uh, but... So now Fred's kids uh, with his ex are uh, getting evacuated, I guess, right now from uh, another place in, in uh, Lackamox territory. It's sort of uh, Highway 5. It goes towards Merritt from that area, from Spencer's Bridge to, to Merritt. So that whole area here is getting, I don't, again, I don't know much what's going on outside the province because uh, really all I know is uh, the conditions around fire G41269, just because that's where I've been every day plugged in uh, 12 hours, at least on my time. Right. But uh, I've, I just haven't been able to, to really pay a lot of attention to the internet or 
and then I get home, uh, you know, after paperwork, I'm trying to talk to my kids. And then uh, I got eight messages last night from random people asked like, what do you think the weather is going to be like here and there? And it's just like, I can't even answer it. Yeah. I'd imagine it's overwhelming, but it's good that you're out. That it's good that you guys are fighting the fire, you know, like uh, it's a, that's a lot of work to do. And that's definitely admirable, you know, helping these people out. So, well, the, we just have so much fun. That's the thing. And I'm sure when we get done uh, knocking this fire down, we're going to get sent to somewhere that's uh, horrifying. So, and I was saying to the guys uh, where there's going to be 5,000 firefighters in two beds. Yeah. So we're just, I'm really enjoying it's This is a pipeline camp and I'm a guy who's talked smack against pipelines and oil for so long. And uh, so it's kind of funny to get put in a pipeline camp, have a steak dinner tonight and uh, have my own shower. There's a weight room, pool tables. It's, it's, it's like the Ramada here for me. Yeah. They take care of those pipeline workers uh, pretty well. Uh, my cut, my, my cousin's uh, man, uh, Ben, worked on a pipeline for a while, and he made, like, a bunch of money. You know how it is here in Texas, though. We, uh, we love our pipelines almost more than we love our kids. So. <laughs> I think but, Alberta's uh, kind of like that. I've often called Alberta, Albert, Texas. Yeah, that makes sense. I think... I think um, that's where Calgary and all and the, all those places are. I think right in Alberta. And, that's uh, correct. In Edmonton. And then the, um, the Peace Country, which is in British Columbia, but it's on the Alberta side of the Rockies. Uh, I've always called that Albertish Columbia. Yeah, that Albertish makes sense. Albertish Columbia. I I should. Write I should those uh, down. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's right up there with the Meteorological Report. Just just great names. Uh, what you're listening to on 88.7 FM in Prince George, uh, Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. replay on Tuesdays. And then you can also hear us uh, noon local time on CKUW 95.9 FM in Winnipeg, which is where Joe Stover has his radio show. So, uh, Speaking of radio shows, Brandon Houck, you got a busy morning coming up tomorrow. What's going on with that? Yeah, I guess some people are going on holiday, so I guess I get to do everything. <laughs> you're not just the weatherman this time. Well, yeah, I gotta give away somebody. I gotta give somebody a cake tomorrow, so we'll find out who's gonna win a birthday cake. Are you gonna buy a cake or are you gonna bake it? Um, uh, if I bake it, they won't be impressed. But uh, I'm, I'm gonna send them to a really great place that bakes really great cakes. Well, that's, that's right. Good. You're that's doing good. God's work, Brandon Houck. That's right. Do you, any, do you have any say in the country music they pick, or is it really just you know the the Nashville production? you know, cheesy country. You, you're not going to go play Waylon Jennings tomorrow, country. are you? <laughs> not gonna be, you're not going to be playing Waylon Jennings tomorrow, are you? Because that, oh, that I'll, be be awesome. uh, I'll be on Boom, too. So it'll be 70s, 80s, 90s on that okay, one. Okay, there you go. That's a legit any, country station, man. Any Chris Christofferson? Oh, my man. Oh, there might yeah. be. Well, oh, I woke up okay. Sunday morning. Or I Eddie Rabbit. My head. Remember Eddie oh, that's Rabbit? On the, that's in the Edmonton station. That's uh, I think that's CFC. Eddie Rabbit for that's... sure, man. I'm a huge Jerry Reed fan. He's down. You're you're well, he's from uh, New Orleans sort of style. But speaking of yeah. music and uh, radio show people, Joe Stover, you were going to sing us a song tonight, and I think it's just about time for that now. We got oh yeah, yeah. Show. Well, now now I wish I could play some Jerry Reed. Just and so I, I got the video from these hey, guys. Son, son, you hot, you hot, son. Thanks a lot. When you're hot, you're hot. Well, Thank this one. Here, when you my, hot, you hot, here, com here comes Amos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amos man. Moses. <laughs> Named him after a man of the cloth. Named him Amos Moses. <laughs> now, I love country music, you know, but uh, once in a while I turn on the new country station, uh, the North here, and, uh, you know, I quickly gouge my eyes and pour cement in my ears and and want all my sensory organs to never sense anything again. It's just. Oh yeah. No, no disagreement here. That's what I'm all about, man. Yeah. New as country. Dale, as Dale Watson says, that's country. My ass. New country well, you know, ought to have been pushed down the stairs. 
Well, you know what happened was all the guys from Poison and L.A. Uh, you know L.A. Hair and all those uh, hair bands they they're now all the studio musicians in Nashville, right? So you go downtown Nashville and you go to step into any club and it's like just the awesomest country music scene. And then you go step into a studio where it's being run by these producers and it's these guys who aren't country musicians playing the playing the licks, right? What do you got that's for a good Stone point? So it so is. weird, yeah. Well, hot country, not country. That's my mantra. I mean, Nashville's well, still the country music capital. It still is home of the opera, even though they've made some goofy decisions. Uh, but that's for another show. Well, the opera was right. always conservative. That's very true. Well, they wouldn't. Need, they they kicked Hank Williams out. So that what more well, do you need to know? You probably would crazy too. drunk lunatic. You know? Are you talking about Hank Williams the third? No, he's no, a the, the, the OG, the OG. Yeah. They kicked him out. They There's no him. gangster. He Hank is a senior. Yeah. So this isn't much of a, I mean, this isn't a song you usually hear around this time of year, but I felt with, uh, with all the heat and everything, uh, that's especially that's going to be coming back for Trey. I, I felt it was apropos. So here we go here. All right. Sing along. If you know the words. Oh, the weather outside is frightful But the fire is so delightful And since we've no place to go Oops, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow No, it doesn't show signs of stopping And I brought some corn for popping The lights are turned way down low let it snow, let it snow, let it snow When we finally kiss goodnight How I hate going out in the storm But if you really hold me tight All the way home I'll be warm Oh, the <laughs> fires are slowly dying Well, hopefully not too slow because Joey needs work And my dear, we're still goodbye -ing. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, for the love of God, please. <coughs> That's it. Okay, Christmas in July. Christmas like in Santa July, Claus I'll take it. Hey, look, oh, I mean, oh, oh. If, I don't mind if 99% of the fires go out so long as I'm on that uh, last one fighting it still. I can dig that. I can dig that. It's a lifestyle, man. It's a lifestyle, son. <laughs> it's a lifestyle. You know, I'm, you know, I'm 42 years old, and I'm out running kids in the mountains because, uh, well, I live at elevation, so I'm, you know, running around 5,000 feet. I'm like, still not so bad up here. And everyone That's else nothing. is like, <laughs> where's the oxygen? You've got healthier lungs than probably most people uh that are flatlanders which is or funny because how much marijuana and tobacco i smoked uh... see it's not that bad for you after all yeah oh, see i think <laughs> i think the whole thing with the thc plant it's all about what you smoke it out of right if you're smoking like blunts and stuff it's gonna it's gonna be worse <laughs> but if you're smoking it out of like a vaporizer I guess it's going to be less worse, right? That's uh, just, what I heard. Just eat it. Just eat I it. I have to admit, I, I hit the bong off, and it's my favorite. But, uh, of course, when working fire, I just, uh, you know, it's just not proper to be professional about things. So I'm starting to have dreams at night again, and uh, they're weird. Like, I had this dream where my foot fell off, and uh, oh, I was, really? like, laying on the ground with, with no foot. And uh, pretty much, like, every ex-girlfriend ever had was walking by. And I was like trying to call them for help or comfort or something, but I couldn't speak for some reason that something was wrong with my mouth or my English. So I was like, <laughs> trying to tell them my foot is off. I need help. And they're like laughing at me and kind of walking by and like not helping me with my foot that was off. And, uh, but you know, when you wake up from a dream and you're like, Oh my God, that was, and sometimes it can ruin your whole day like that. Back. Yeah, I, no, that happens a I lot. Up, I woke up and I saw that I had a foot, and I said, I have a foot. And I went, oh, good, I can speak too. And then I was in a great mood. I'm going to a fire today. I'm going to lead a crew of badasses into fire. and Got uh, totally stoked on it. 
So for everybody uh, in the Prince George uh, Fire Center region, uh, it's pretty good news for this area. The fire conditions are going down, down, down. I mean, uh, for how long? But I mean, it's still the height of summer. We got some drier weather coming, but I mean, it's not looking like there's anything explosive in the horizon here for uh, fire growth. So, um, you know, at least the north can kind of rest easy that uh, the story should stay down south. And, uh, you know, and the fire I've been here, I've been, it's south of a, city, a town called Vanderhoof. Uh, about, about uh, 70, 80 kilometers. And uh, so it's the Prince George Fire Center area. And uh, for all you listeners on 88.7 FM, uh, fires are looking pretty good up here. They're sending a lot of the heavy crews down south, like the unit crews and, uh, you know, the heavy, heavy guys. So uh, that's leaving a lot of us contract crews to uh, mop up and uh, hold the line as best we can. Like I say, uh, until today, they've just bumped another crew in. So there's another five pack. So now there's a, uh, 15 plus uh four initial attacks and now we have 19 people on our line but it's 14 kilometers of undef you know of line where there's some guard like a lot of the guards have been put in by machines since then but uh you know it's easily if uh, it got hot uh, quick enough and stayed hot uh, this is a fire that could just blow right up and and be a massive problem and there's just not the resources here to uh fully stomp it out right now right so we got two minutes left uh frankie what's going on in your life and uh what's going on this week for you doing great so far and i got an interview with jason marshall we don't have cookies on sunday afternoon and trey campbell man on trey and roger gardner wildcard podcast on sunday night excellent you can find frankie my link McDonald. tree is frankie mcdonald i was just gonna say your link tree is frankie mcdonald that makes it so like makes it so easy doesn't it joe stover what's on your show this week well, we're going to talk about uh, the only, well, there's only two redeemable qualities of summer in my mind, and it's baseball and road trips, and we're going to do a whole big show about road trips and how great the summer road trip is and the kind of music that you'll listen to on road trips, so it should be lots of fun. So how do you do review CKUW 95.9 FM and CHMR 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland? And I guess just for last word before we go, I mean, you can uh, find me on Joey Only the Caribou Weather Dude and uh, see uh, some videos of our crew we keep putting up. But I just want to say to Trey, Brandon, Frankie, Joe, uh, just good to see familiar faces. You yeah, know? it was good to see you. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having Absolutely. me on. Thank you. And uh, hopefully uh, I'm somewhere next week still that we'll probably still be in this camp with any luck so we could get another episode in before uh, I'm back in some place where – there's no communication with the outside world. All right, everybody, that's the end of the show for this week. We'll see you next time. Stay cool, everybody. Cheers. Bye, friends. Bye, bye. Yeah, Good to see you, Joey. Yeah. Best of you luck guys. in the fire, man. Yeah, best, bros. Of, best of luck to you, Frank. Uh, best of luck to you. I'm Frank and Best of luck. Best of luck to you. Enjoy only.